is Talk Cards. Oh. Oh. Well, welcome back to another week of Brothers Talk Cars, everybody. Uh, episode 10. So. Yes. We made it. We made it to the the double digits. We're killing it right now. So <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Should we get started? Yep. Hell but yeah, first, brother. <laughs> buckle up. Oh, I hit my mic. Great. All right. Safe now. Okay. I wanted to start off by talking about uh, the Nikola Badger. They came out yes. this last week, and this was surprising to me. Like, I've heard rumors of diesel brothers you know partnering with yeah. nicola well they came out and pretty much announced it and it was kind of a cool announcement so first of all what do you think of the name badger for a truck this is their electric truck i mean i kind of think it's cool because you have a lot of i don't know the badgers it's an interesting one actually it is i, I like it. think about it i think it's cool it fits it's different i mean everyone knows the whole honey badger youtube video or uh-huh. whatever um it's interesting just because a lot of these trucks are named after an animal They're, they they yeah. had the bison which yeah. was kind the of the colorado yeah, the colorado bison um you've got the raptor the ram uh-huh but the badger the badger <laughs> that's a much smaller I, animal than the others me but, personally you know, a badger's a wild animal. It's crazy. It, yeah. But at the same time, I think they're kind of doing it like, it's the badger. Like, you yeah. know, it's kind of a joke. I don't know. I I kind of like it. Yeah. I like I it. I personally haven't even seen what it looks like. I just know that Nikola um, has really exploded recently. Yeah. Oh, I did see the front yeah. rendering of it, of the headlights and mm-hmm. the light bar. Yeah. Um, it's raptor looking. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it looks is. like a super modern oh, raptor. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, what is it called? Nissan Titan Warrior? Mm hmm. Yeah. Mixed with raptor. Yeah. Have they announced any specs or anything specific on it? Yes and no. I mean, it's the rough specs. Yeah. You get a choice of three different colors. Yeah. Like okay. The, the dark blue, the white, and then the, the teal blue. That teal is actually really cool. It is. It is. Cool. Um, yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting that that came out recently because I don't know if um, you guys watching or listening or you two here with me uh, saw the article of Rivian delaying their R1T truck and the really? yeah and I mean it's it's not crazy delayed. It's delayed until summer of 2021. Uh, so, so it's, it's not too it's bad. It's still not that bad. Um, I actually didn't know that it was being released before the Cybertruck. Wasn't the yeah. Cybertruck supposed to come out this year? Next I, year. Oh. Yeah. It's like December or fall, winter of next year, I think is what they oh. said. 2021 or 2022, something like that. Oh, I can't remember. But Rivian is beating them to that launch. You kind of have to. In yeah. this market, you need to be the first to come out. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. So talking about the, the Cybertruck, this is a truck. I mean, trucks are designed to be used for utility. Uh-huh. And carry stuff, pull stuff, all that kind. Of, you know, mm-hmm. Tesla's designing a truck from someone who for, has no idea for urban life. Yeah, like no idea what a truck should N- do. No, and it's I I think I've told you guys this story before. It reminds me of the Honda Ridgeline. I read an article one time of a guy who used a Honda Ridgeline as a ranching truck for one day. And it's the Honda Ridgeline that had the speakers in the bed of the truck. Yeah. And he was tossing hay bales into it. And the first day he used it for farming, he broke the speakers in the bed of the truck. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of a similar situation to what the Cybertruck's going to be, where Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of has good intentions, um, but it's a city truck. You're right. It's it's designed for the, hey, look, I got a a Tesla Cybertruck. And that's it. Yeah. It's not like, hey, I'm moving. Come help me with your truck. Yeah. Or, or let me haul some horses to whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so talking about the, the Nicola Badger, the fact that they have the Diesel Brothers, who, I mean, are super big yeah. into diesel trucks. They know them back and forth, inside, outside, upside down. Yeah. Or, but the fact that they have them working with them. And even in this release, they talked about, 
we're going to break a couple because we want to test the crap oh, out Oh, I'm of sure. Them. I'm sure they're really going to test. Where Tesla it, goes out and they throw a ball at the window and it shatters uh, immediately. Like, come on. Didn't you test I, that before? I also just read an article saying that they're changing the exterior exoskeleton of. I saw that as well because they've upgraded their spacecraft to a higher aluminum yeah. or, or whatever it is. It's stainless steel. Yeah. So they're putting the new body on so it. So it's not like the roll cold steel anymore. It's like a stainless steel. I'm not sure. But. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever I, they're I was worried about it next. scratching more than anything. Well, when I read that, I was like, oh, I'm not a fan already. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Like I said, I think people are going to get them, be like, this is the coolest thing ever, and then they're going to start finding things like, yeah, that steel is going to get hot. You know, it's going to be, how's the roll up bed over your truck or the bed? Yeah, the roll up gate over the bed or yeah. whatever it is. How's that going to be? Can I even put stuff in the dang bed? How's the range going to be if I I'm pulling like- a trailer you know i feel like grabbing something from the side of the bed like a normal person does you can't can't because because it's angled and it's super high yeah Yeah. it'll be interesting to see when that comes out but i think that um the badger will be a great competition i mean bunch it it looks like a truck it It does it looks like what a truck should be it does it's the best out of the three Oh, by it far. does absolutely, and i think that i'm not saying that that's because of the diesel brothers but they make some really good looking trucks they yeah. do some tasteful modifications to yeah. these trucks <laughs> represent <laughs> over here um but i feel like they probably had a good say in the styling or maybe they saw the styling and that's why they partnered with them yeah i'm not sure either way here's impressive i i think they were kind of forced to partner with nikola a little bit i mean mm-hmm. it's a utah company they're based in utah yeah well it, i mean it's a utah moved to arizona company but they were forced because of that lawsuit. I think the EPA has kind of said, hey, you guys are causing issues. And to give themselves kind of a little bit of cover, they're, they're like, hey, we're moving to electric. You know, we're going to help Nikola, which is fine. I think yeah. that's really cool. That's the future. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I could see that being the case. That may be part of it. It may not be the whole story because maybe they really do legit want to help. And, and and they know that that is the future. And reinvent themselves. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, hmm. moving on. Yep. Okay, did you guys see the 10,000th Lamborghini Urus was produced a couple days ago? 10,000 Lamborghini Urus. That's crazy. That's a and lot. Considering, two years that they were made? Yeah, two years. Yeah, considering the car's been out for two years, and they have rolled out 10,000 of these $250,000 <laughs> SUVs. <laughs> That's impressive. That's that is impressive. that's really impressive. We actually looked up the statistics before uh, this. Did our homework. Yeah, we did our <laughs> homework. Surprise, surprise. Um, but this is the second highest produced car. The Gallardo. Gallardo was the number one, and they produced fourteen thousand. But that was over a ten-year span. Yeah. This is ten thousand over a two-year span. So will it surpass it? Absolutely. Yep. Give it one more year, and you know we're going to be fifteen. Fifteen thousand. 16th i mean i don't know maybe after this year it's going to be a little bit slower just due to the whole covid thing it could but that's an expensive suv to sell ten thousand. dollars yeah i mean good for that that just shows you that the market is moving towards suvs absolutely i mean the fact that you know talking to my wife over and over she always knew that i was gonna have a lamborghini one day you know she's like oh yeah yeah but the minute they come out with an suv she's like i want it yeah i, I don't care i want it it's how much quick. is it 250 yeah we we need it i was like someday (laughs) it looks good it's quick yeah we went to a car show recently uh auto expo actually and uh that wasn't showcased but it was showcased on the outside someone just was there viewing the expo but they drove their urus and that was our most liked car was not even one that was for show it was someone who drove it as a daily too yeah we talked about this on one of our past pod past podcasts and no, everyone walking past really didn't stop to look. It was just us. You they know, it's kind of a, it was. yeah, no one realized. Hidden gem. Yeah. Also, recently went on a vacation together and uh, Ty and I were driving back. We were driving to a store or something like that. We see a Rolls Royce coming and coming oh, up yeah. the road. They're not very pretty. No. <laughs> They're, They're large. We, were, we told our dad, we were like, you know that's three hundred fifty thousand dollars. He's like, for that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
And then you uh, started looking them up. Yeah. You're, you're getting the Rolls Royce name. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. They're probably super luxurious, but they were pretty ugly. Yeah. Body style was weird, so. In my opinion, a lot of the high luxury cars are not very good looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. Well, I mean, I like the Bentley Continental speed. You know, it looks good. Mm-hmm. And then when you start getting into their more luxurious with all the chrome and stuff, I'm like, it doesn't look good yeah, anymore. No, you ruined doesn't. it. It doesn't. So, anyway. Well, that's topic. cool. Good for Lamborghini. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, I recently made a discovery last night of, <laughs> oh, man, of something. Uh, Hyundai has entered a very new playing field for them. And what I mean by that is Hyundai is now producing what they call the Hyundai Porest. Porest. Porest, like forest, but with a P. P. The poorest. poorest. And now, it is. This sounds like something you find on your face. For yeah. real. It is an RV. It's a kind of like the. It's not like a full sized RV. It's the the truck more or less attached to the RV back side okay. of it. But it's kind of an interesting market for Hyundai to come it, out in. It is. But they're coming at a really good price. Okay. It, it looks it's, decent. It's futuristic looking. Yeah. Um, oh, you're looking at it. Why am I showing you? Same picture. Uh, forty-two thousand dollars. That's actually pretty good for a new RV. I mean, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you get a pretty reliable company making it, and I think it said it sleeps five adults, so it's spacious enough. Yeah. I really don't know any other details other than the name's <laughs> weird and that it sleeps like four. That or five is kind people. of a dumb name. I think it's ugly. It's pretty rounded it's, for us. It weird. is very strange looking. Yeah. But I can't tell if the thing on the top is a skylight. I hope it is because that would be cool. Uh, skylight in your RV, that'd be... Yeah, and it looks like it, it kind of looks Tesla-ish where it covers almost the entire top. Oh, oh that'd, that'd be way awesome. Show the yeah. back rim or the back wheel. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Anyway, well, I just wanted to bring that up because they're entering a new playing field that... Not a lot of companies are really in. Yeah, you don't see you don't see a lot of car companies uh-uh. doing that. Uh-uh. I mean, Mercedes has their vans that they've turned into like off-road vans and stuff, or camping vans and yeah. stuff. But I, 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 not too many. Nope, have gone into that market. And I don't know what made them jump into this market. Uh, well, maybe it's the whole COVID thing because could be all, sales mm-hmm. are through the roof for rvs and trailers that is, that is true actually maybe hyundai's like yeah hurry make something let's cash in on it and that's why it's a little ugly yeah it was there they had to rush it it was their b team designing <laughs> they had, it <laughs> they had to really rush the the design process yeah. of it okay it'd be interesting to find more details out about it yeah um ran across ford released their prototype maki mustang 1400 this past week yes there was a video on it. The one that goes. Yes. Yes. It hurt my sounds throat. horrible. It does. It really sounds bad. I made a post about this on our Instagram, Brothers Talk Cars. And I said, it sounds like an overworked blender. Yeah. Like I you turned your blender on high and then it went even higher and it's struggling to chop anything. Uh-huh. It sounded horrific. It sounds really, really annoying actually. I can only imagine being on the inside and hearing that constantly. Yeah. They were saying that it has seven electric motors, which is cool. Yeah. It was really fast. And, you know, they were doing donuts and drifting in it, which was awesome. But I don't know. Like, I wouldn't go see that because it just sounded so bad. Like, it hurt my ears yeah. after listening to it for a good minute. I was just like, I got to turn it off. It's very high pitched. It is. Now. <laughs> For me, you know, I mean, the future is electric. We know that already. Yeah. But the future sounds terrible. The future sounds... <laughs> if that's what yeah. the future is going to sound like yeah. with these high-performance electric cars, mm-mm. Yeah. No. Not a fan of that. Like Formula E, I've seen it a little bit on TV and stuff like that. And it's cool because it's just this electric... You know, you can hear them drive past. But this was bad. It was a high-pitched scream. And it just... I don't know. I, I don't know if motorsports is ever going to be the same if we move to electric. Yeah. What are your takes on it? I 
I actually think it's kind of cool looking. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All the car. Actually, I don't know if that's carbon. They well, look like the canard things coming yeah. out. It's definitely drift style designing. Yeah. 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 Or rally it's, style designing. Yeah. But. Stancy more. More stancy. I just. I don't think. Stancy more. Stancy, stancy more. more. <laughs> I just don't Big think. Wang. They talked about Ken Block possibly using the same drivetrain in his new car. Uh-huh. I don't think he will. No. He should stick with gas. Mm-hmm. Or make a diesel power drift car. <laughs> That's yes. a job for Cletus. Or Weston. Definitely Weston. Weston, the smoke sting. Yeah. He's, it's it's, it's almost ready. He should just turn it into a drift car. Yeah. The first 12 valve Cummins muscle car. That's also drift used car. as a drift car. <laughs> yeah, I saw that video of, of him getting it rolling. It's pretty cool. It I'm, I'm actually quite excited about that. That's another person that's just, let's put a 12 valve in it. And it works. And it's so, I don't know how it's it so works. Cool. <laughs> well, going along with some car news, car YouTuber news, my bad. Um, see what Cletus has bought. Did he, did he buy it? I think he bought he did. it. He yeah. bought another hovercraft. Yeah. Another freaking hovercraft. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. But this one's like better. Like a big time big yeah. boy hovercraft. Not a yes. little eighties commercial. Hey everybody, buy this hovercraft. My this favorite is, like, is in his videos he's like, We have to be doing like thirty and he's doing like ten, 10 miles an hour. <laughs> but yeah, this I one have, this one's fast. a yeah. beast. Oh yeah. Good. I'm what, excited for that content. What do you think his plans are with two hover? I, I think he's going to race it. <laughs> I, I mean, I can only imagine that he's going to have some event or something that it will showcase those mm-hmm. or race those. But Take it out onto the the raceway. and Yeah. I wonder if this one's only for water. Actually, it's a hovercraft. Should be able to do yeah. everything, right? Mm-hmm. Who knows? With his little hovercraft, I'll just call it the little hovercraft because it now. is, yeah. <laughs> Um, when he was on the grass, it was a little slow, and then he'd mm-hmm. hit the cement and speed up. Yeah, and, and then and he hit the water, too, and yeah. it would speed up. Yeah, it was strange. I'm excited to see what he does with the new one. Yeah. Well, let's see. Who else has come out with any new content recently? Stradman has bought <sighs> yes. Ferrari 458. 458 Spider. Mm-hmm. So he... Why? I, I don't... I'm confused why he sold all of his cars. He he did forewarn that he was going to be buying a JDM car, his hypercar, and okay. another random car. Okay. The 458 Spider must be the random car. Yeah. I think he said it was the random car. Well, I wouldn't consider a 458 a hypercar. No, mm. definitely not, and it's not the JDM, obviously. No. Um, but it's interesting because, in my opinion... Why sell your Ford GT to turn around two weeks later and buy a 458 Spider? I don't know. Why not like a 488? Yeah. I mean, or even a Pista. Yeah. Yeah. I would at least go with a Pista. I don't know. He said that this was going to go along with his hypercar in his video. So he's still getting the hypercar. So he's still getting the hypercar and he's still getting the JDM car. Okay. But I'm I'm just confused. He already has the one Ferrari. Well, so looking at it from an investment standpoint, I would have stuck with the Ford GT. I would it's going to hold its value or go up it's, in value. And it has gone up in value uh-huh. a lot recently. But what other YouTuber has a Ford GT, though? The old one or the yeah. new one? Not many that I know of. Does Drag Times have a Ford GT, an old one? I don't know. I can't remember. There's not. I don't think there's many. I don't think there's many. But so from a YouTuber content, I don't know. Because, I mean, buying new cars is always good content. Yeah. But a Ford GT, I think, is cooler than the Ferrari, in my opinion. Absolutely. And that's my opinion as well. Um I think it's funny because I watched one of his videos recently of him more or less like going and seeing the new uh, Ford GT get delivered to, um, yeah. I can't remember the company's name, 
something grill. Yeah, it's like the automotive grill or whatever that's up towards Salt Lake. Um, But he watched the delivery of the brand new Ford GT for the owner of that company or something like that. And he he was like, Ford won't let me buy one yet or whatever. And he's Mm -hmm. like, please, Ford. But he just sold his old Ford GT. If you wanted to build rapport with Ford... You should wouldn't have kept you, it. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't you want to keep your old Ford GT? Yep. It's just thinking, look, I have the old one. I want the new one. Now he has but that's a 4.5A not... Spider. <laughs> yeah. The new Ford GT isn't great content. Though. No, it's not. I mean, for me, it would be any car is a car. But if you want, I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Maybe we're not like most people. When we see the Ferrari name, depending on the car, half the time we're just like... Uh, better choices out there. Yeah. And that's what I felt with this one. Yep. Is he, but yeah. Do you think he's going to build it, build it up? And he did probably. say he was going to build it like crazier, or more obscure or something. I can't remember the exact wording he used, but he said he was going to build it like crazier than anything he has. So I don't know what he means by that. He's already got a Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. he does. The race one. Yeah. The Mermaid super one? loud one. Why doesn't he just build that one up? I don't know. It's already pretty built, but I don't know. So he's going to twin turbo the 458. Put a massive wing. So he's going to build it like Damon's. He's going to wipe it. I was just about to say. He's going to do what Damon did. Put yeah. the GT3 body kit on it. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting. I mean, Sorry, I've seen it before. Should have twin turbo it as GT. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think we've seen... There was that one. The one that we oh, saw yeah. at the races. Yeah. That was, he had his, his license plate said 230 miles per hour. No, it was 55. 255. 255, that's right. And it had 1,200 horsepower. Yeah, it was some Something stupid Something crazy amount. like that. Man, that thing was awesome. Yeah. We, in On that race, they would drive around this S-curve, and then they closed down a highway, and they were able to drive it mm-hmm. top speed. And he was pushing. For charity. For charity. And he was pushing over 200, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, he got like 213, didn't 213 he? 213 like or something like that. Won, the, won that day. Yeah, I was going to say, I think like he got the highest. highest. He yeah. did get the highest, yeah. And yeah, it was like 212 or 213. Gosh. And, and that he was only wasn't with, pushing. Yeah, that was only with a few miles. What yeah. could you do with... They also had a big old S-curve. Mm-hmm. It did, yeah. What could you do with, you know, and straight? not to mention, it was like 101 degrees that day. Yeah, it, it was. was hot. Yeah. Very. And they were running them multiple passes yeah. even. So a lot of strain on it too. Anyway, that was kind of a sidetrack. But case in point, stay with the 4 GT. If you own a 4 GT, do not get don't a 458 sell it, Spider. Please. Yeah, don't sell it for a 458 or a 488 or even a piece to just keep it, please. Yeah. It, it'll go up in value for sure. And it already has. But if lot. you go to a car show, that's probably the first car I'm going to look at if it's there with Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Yeah. I'd look at that 4 GT. Oh, again. Even yeah. though I've seen... What, four of them? Five of them? You know what? But how many Lamborghinis have you seen? A lot. Exactly. I think you're less likely to see a Ford GT driving around than you would any Ferrari. Well, not any Ferrari, but a yeah. Ferrari or a Lamborghini. I've seen more Enzos than I have. I have two, actually. Four GTs. I haven't. I've just seen the one guy multiple times, but. <laughs> <laughs> True. But, yeah. I mean, you're you're still likely to see pretty rare cars over seeing four GTs. Yeah. And now our chances of seeing it have went down because he sold it. Actually, no, it's, it's still, still in Utah. Utah. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, we may still... see it. Hopefully we see it more. Potentially, if, yeah. If Patrick's out driving. Hopefully, Especially yeah. because how many cars does Patrick have? I don't know. Two, three? Probably less know. than four. Stradman did. Oh, yeah. So he might drive it more. Yeah. So we might see it more. Who knows? Okay. Um, anyone else? Chris from B is for Build. I'm representing Chris from B is for Build today with my hat. But uh, his single-seater Roadster, he was working on the frame this week. Yeah. And it looks insane. It looks good. I'm excited to see what he does with it, like what the body panels are going to look yeah. like. And I think Oscar's looks pretty good. Oscar's I mean, looks good. He posted a teaser about Kyle's, and it looks pretty like plain right <laughs> yeah it looks plain right now but i'm sure he's been doing other things i'm sure there's it. something that's different he had to fix it because it was pretty wrecked it was pretty wrecked and i know they were using a lot of aftermarket body parts that they were going to use on chelsea's m5 i believe uh-huh um but they were gonna end up using it on kyle's if i remember correct yeah um but his i'm excited to see his yeah um play out and that the single build of seater it. 
it's gonna be so cool he's so low to the ground yeah that's my only concern is yeah. he had to adjust it a little bit in the last video but because, he's still really low yeah i can't remember the exact measurements it was like 18 i don't oh, know i can't remember from the bottom of the the frame did, once you get the engine transmission did you say panels, where the engine was going to be I'll mid just, it's, mid engine yeah it's mid engine but i didn't watch that vlog yeah video and it's a ls engine yes too. it is Ooh. yeah he said he's gonna throw an ls engine in it and that is genius yeah. that's genius i mean if you're gonna that's probably the most used car or used engine for yeah. project cars out there it can hold a lot of horsepower mm -hmm. i'm wondering if he's gonna get it tuned or whatever by like texas speed or something yeah. like that like you did with the burn to like you did with the burn i'm sure he's I'm sure he's going to do a similar yeah. thing with the burnt car. He had success with it, and it ran pretty good. Yeah. So He hasn't really showed it recently. He hasn't showed it much. A few vlogs ago, we talked about it a little bit. Yeah, he said he was working, working on it behind the scenes, yeah. um, just on some tiner. Which is sad. Tiner. <laughs> tiner. <laughs> teeny tiny adjustments. I don't know what tiner is. <laughs> you got tiner out of teeny tiny? I did. <laughs> I I don't know what. I had a stroke. Impossible. had a stroke. It's hot in here, guys. We were also camping for... A good number of days so okay um any other youtuber i can't think of any you miss a lot nope. when you're camping huh i said you miss a lot of youtube news when you're camping yeah <laughs> when you don't have any access to your phone oh did you see mr jww is doing like these koenigsegg style vlog things like these interviews with him and i thought it was kind of cool you'll have to watch it really yeah he was interviewing uh, Christian von Koenigsegg about the cars and his history and stuff like that. Yeah, cool. I haven't hmm. seen that. I'll have to watch him. But it's really professionally done. It. I was amazed. Huh. All right. Uh, so if you guys don't follow us on social media, uh, I suggest that you do. We usually post some some fun content and stuff like that. One of the the posts on our Instagram page, uh, Brothers Talk Cars, was a series of four pictures of different cars with the question. Um, with a $50,000 budget, which of these would you choose? And now we wanted to kind of expound on that a little bit, talk a little bit about what our choice would be and why maybe throw in a few different cars just for yeah. um, variety's sake. But the the four cars from the post were the Ariel Atom, mm -hmm. the Audi R8, yep. the Nissan GTR, yep. and the Dodge Challenger Hellcat correct yes okay so we'll start with ty and i think we'll just work this way okay what of those four cars would you choose oh, right now okay. and why um i'd honestly go gtr why because i've always wanted one twin turbo v6 faster than most supercars yes. most supercars not everything on that yeah. list yeah yeah that hellcat would that no. Hellcat's close, and then you got the Aerial Atom, which will melt your which face. Which will exactly. destroy both of those cars. So that's what you choose? Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually commented on that post mm -hmm. specifically, and I gave my reasonings there, um, but I'll kind of just reiterate them just so that you guys can be informed of that. I think I would choose the Aerial Atom, honestly. And it's not because, I mean, I yes, I have always wanted one. It's not the best in my opinion yeah. uh mm -hmm. reliability wise we have no clue because they really didn't make a whole lot of them yeah um it does use a toyota camry engine i believe honda engine oh it does yep. is it the k24 engine i don't know it was a honda four cylinder oh, okay uh but yeah so it has a fairly reliable engine but the styling is unique if you you know if you saw one on the road yeah that is a head turner Yep. It just, the exoskeleton, just, it looks insane. But the speed is really what I would be mm -hmm. going for. It beats all of those. Yeah. And uh, more. And more. And, and more. some hypercars. Uh, if you have not seen videos of Jeremy Clarkson's face from when, Top Gear from way top back. Gear, yeah, old Top Gear, like mm -hmm. early 2000s Top Gear, um, when he test drove it, or mid, mid 2000s. Mid 2000s. Uh, when he test drove it, go watch that on YouTube. It's his, hilarious. His face just melts. And it, that's the only way I can describe it. Yes. Uh, and I think that that would just be the choice that if you took it to a car show, if you took it to a Cars and Coffee, if you 
showcased it in any way, it would be absolutely the most unique vehicle there, even if there were Enzos there. Yeah. People would wonder what the Aerial Atom is because no one knows. Well, it's like we went to that... that uh the the Bach Mono. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> went and saw all these cool supercars and there was even the Carrera GT. And there was oh, yeah. that that Ford GT there. Yeah, that same Ford Ford GT. But we all sat by that Bach Mono waiting for it. Yeah. We sat move. there for a long time. We, did, we, we sat, sat there, there for a long time. Because it's not something you see every day. Yeah. No. And it, yeah, super unique, super rare. Not even I mean, I think it's cool in its own way. Yeah. But it's not as cool as some of the cars that were there in my opinion. Yeah. But it was the most unique, so I was immediately drawn to it because when am I ever gonna see another Bach mono? Yeah. That's the type of thing that you would get with an aerial atom. Yep. And it's probably one of the cheapest on this list, actually. You so can find them for it's interesting because when we looked a few years ago, they were all going for fifty plus thousand. Yeah. Even used. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've always thought that they were going to be close to 100000 We jumped on the other day to bring a trailer, and the last few that have sold have all been around twenty yeah. five to 35000 Yep. I, they're getting cheap. I jumped on it recently, too. And, yeah, they had like 19,000 miles on yeah. them, and they were going for $28,000. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, when they were released, they were only like thirty-five or forty. Yeah, they were pretty cheap when they. But they only made. I remember reading an article about it years ago. Mm-hmm. They were obviously like a startup company, yep. and they only made twelve a year. Yeah, for the first like four years or something. But yeah, nineteen thousand miles, just thirty-something thousand. But yeah, that's probably the cheapest on this list. Yep. Yeah. Possibly. For me. Maybe it's because I have a Challenger, but I think I would do the Hellcat. Yeah. The Aerial Atom is awesome, and I've always wanted one. And hopefully someday I will have one. Mm-hmm. But that Hellcat's pretty cool. There's and it sounds charger, so good. Something about that 707 yeah. horsepower. Well, like listening to um, Goon Squad's Trackhawk, mm-hmm. that whine. Yeah. Sarah's like, so my wife. I let my life, wife listen to it, and she was like, is there something wrong with that? And I was like, no. Yeah. That's, that's the a supercharged wine. She was like, oh, and you like that? And I was like, yes, yes, I do. I have coworkers who I know one who's like, that is the worst sound. I'm like, that is the most beautiful sound. That is a sound. beautiful sound. I think it sounds better than a turbo in my opinion. It does, but. in my opinion as well. Just that wine is so cool. What else would be on this list that you would consider? Kia Stinger. Kia Stinger is it. You could almost buy one new for around 50000 Yeah, you could. Mm-hmm. And it's arguably is, it's not as fast as the GTR, um, but it also pulls some really, I, I think it's, it's 3.2 seconds. Is it? I believe. Don't quote me on that. I was going to say, I think it might be slower than that. I think it's in the four. Is it? I'm going to Google it real quick, just so that we know. I'm actually not sure, but oh, I think it would be fun. It up. I'm not. Oh, never mind. I think it would be a good car. Yeah. But... You have that, like, although you don't see it very often, mm-hmm. it's not one of those appealing cars. Yeah. It's not one of those, like, it's, what is that? It's not a type super of beautiful car. No. It looks like the Optima, yeah. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. What else could be on that list? What about an F-Type? F-Type. F-Type would be a really good one. You can't get an SVR for Ooh. that price. But you could get a... Give it another year, and I bet you'll start seeing those SBRs drop the, to the almost first 50. The first edition SBRs, yeah. yeah. Dang. I would actually consider an F-Type. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really think of that. That'd be a good one. Hey, you were right. Four something? This says 4.2 seconds. Yeah. I was going to say, I know it was a little bit slower, that's still but that's crazy. still quick. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, when do you really need to go... Th- Zero to sixty in three seconds, especially in a car that can hold five people. Yeah, <laughs> so that is true. Is Kia can, yeah, yeah. It's a four door. It's a full on sedan. Oh, it's yeah. Like the Hellcat, As the three in the back and oh. two up front. It's pretty cool. It's cool for what Kia. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know what that. Like I don't the, know what I just said, but you're right. I mean, the fact that Kia was coming out with a car like that is pretty cool. I just wish they would have styled it a little bit different. Made yeah. it more aggressive because it does look just like an Optima. Mm-hmm. And that's why I've always wanted to 
get a wrecked one, uh, drop it, and wide body it. I yeah. think it would just change the look of it entirely, and that's also a build that you do not see. Yeah. I think that would impress a lot of people personally. But. Hmm. Well, let's move on to some uh, quick news. Yeah. Some rapid fire news. So Ford has come out, and they say if you're uh, reserving – a 2021 Bronco, you're going to wait about 18 months. Ooh. That's a long that wait. Is I mean, a it's, long time. they got to go into production, but they're so backed up because so many people so are many reserved, people reserved one. That it was sold out. So I'll just go ahead and say, last week we were asking if it was a success or not. I'm just going to say, yep, it is. It's a success for sure. doesn't matter if it comes out and it's unreliable. People <laughs> wanted them. Um... This says the Honda HRV, a triumph of engineering. Nah. The HRV? Yeah. I don't even... Okay, better news. <laughs> Bugatti's coming out with something they're going to call the Baby 2. I saw that. It is a Type 35, but it's smaller, uh-huh. and it's electric. I saw that. I am so stoked. That's cool. So the Type 35 is their old race car. Uh-huh. Um, but they're going to redo it and make it electric. How I mean, they're taking something back from like the twenties, thirties, yeah, like nineteen thirties for sure. And they're gonna make it a modern car and electric and electric. You think people will drive it. Yeah, like, why not? I bet it's gonna sell out. I bet it's already sold oh, out. Wait. How much do you think it's gonna be? Because I it has the Bugatti know. name attached to it. A lot. A lot. A lot. It's oh, not gonna yeah. be as much as their their hypercars for sure. I don't think. But it could. <clears throat> um. Oh, did you, did you click it? There's a limited production. Okay. okay. And it's being done by UK's little car company. All right. And it will cost between thirty eight and seventy four thousand. Really? But the fact that it's got the Bugatti name on it. That's thousand? Cool. Thousand. Wait, how much like with the repeat those numbers? Thirty eight to seventy four thousand. Thousands. That's kind of a big. I was just to say jump. That's a big gap. Yeah, I mean, for something that's not going to come with options or anything like True. that. I mean, they're all going to come the same. Yeah, and they're probably going to be that Bugatti blue. I'm sure it's going to be interior upgrades and. But do you really think? I think they're just going to straight up. I don't. I think it has it'll be the Bugatti on the Bugatti name end. though. I wonder it's, if Bugatti's going to be like, "You're really going to sell them for seventy four thousand? Yeah. I mean, it's got our name. Come on, yeah. let's sell them for two or three hundred thousand. That's probably because they are small. They are a small, small car. That's Is it only a two seater? I assume so. I think so. I think it was just one bench. If I, remember I assume so. I maybe it's just meant for kids. Maybe it's going to be small enough that it's just meant for kids. Yeah, because I wonder if that's going to be like bad for Bugatti. What, what if it is like one of those electric cars that you buy for your four year old? But it's a Bugatti, like legit with Bugatti name and everything. Then that's a $74,000 yeah. kid's toy. But I power could wheels. understand that though. That's a big boy's I mean, power wheels. If you are paying two plus million for some brand new Bugattis yeah. and you want your kid to have something yeah. that's from the Bugatti name, dropping $74,000 probably isn't that big of a deal. No. So. Manny Koshbin. Koshbin. Koshbin would yeah. do it. Yeah, he would. He's probably, he's probably just going one. for himself. I was going to say, he's probably reserved Okay, looking through more of it, mm-hmm. I think it is meant for kids. Really? Yeah. I want to ride in one, though. <laughs> Wait, does it say how fast it is? It says it has a limiting speed of 12. So, yep, it's for it's kids. It's for kids. Okay. So, well. save your pennies because your kids are going to want this as the next hot item this Christmas. Thirty-eight thousand to seventy-four thousand dollars. That <laughs> and they can have better. rolling up little five-year-old rolling up in his Bugatti type or baby two or whatever it's called. That'd be the so type sick. That, that would be hilarious. actually really sick. Yeah, I did not read into that apparently when well, I saw it. Like going I, to a car show, have your kid driving a Bugatti. I don't even remember. What you it's could called. take that to a car show, and it's just a little kid yeah. car. Yeah, <laughs> people would be all over that. Um, okay, next news. 2021 Toyota Venza. It was like a smaller SUV when it came yeah, out. Yeah, I remember the Venza. It is now a hybrid only. So they've come out with it again. It's hybrid only. Starts at $33,000. So it's more expensive than the RAV4. But I think this is kind of their True. 
more luxurious than the RAV4. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But still small SUV. Interesting. Yep. So I think it's the higher end. A lot of people of love that Venza. It was yeah, really reliable. I remember reliable. the Venza was a pretty good success back in the day. Yep. Um, the Cadillac Lyric electric vehicle will have an enormous 33 inch dash display. Whoa. Like, are they just going to start be putting... like this skinny long? That's what I'm assuming. They're saying it's 33 inches, but it's this long but skinny yeah. one. So next step is going to be, we sit in a car and a 72 inch TV just sits in front of us. Sits and, on our lap. Uh-huh. And it, there's the road right here. And then we can like play computer games and play Diablo. Or the whole windscreen. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the next step. I'll play some like Overwatch it. while I'm traveling to <laughs> St. George or something. That's right. Interesting. Yeah, I'm assuming that they're, they're meaning skinny and long because yeah. a 32-inch display, even the the 12 inch or 18 inch displays that they're putting in some of these, these yeah. modern uh, cars are, they're beefy. They're big. So, yep. well, Jeep's a little late, but the Jeep or Jeep has been seen testing the new V8 powered Wrangler Rubicon. Wow. Ooh, a little late. How, I mean, how many years has this Jeep been out? A long time. And they're now just putting a V8 in it. Yeah. A little worrisome. Yeah. Especially because V8's not doing too hot in mm-hmm. a lot of modern cars recently. Well, it's the 392 motor from Dodge. Yeah. They've had it for a long... They've had access to it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, they have. Why couldn't they have done this five years ago? True. Because now they're trying to compete with the Bronco, even though it's not V8. Yeah, the Bronco doesn't come with a V8, but it's a more powerful V6. It's a more, yeah, the V6 is way better. I don't know. Interesting. Uh, it's a little late doesn't really look all that good either the hood they have to have a scoop in it and it looks kind of dumb really mm-hmm. mm. um the 2021 lexus lc 500 starts at 102 with the 2021 so, yep, yeah 2021, 2021 lexus lc 500 the back end is kind of ugly on it really they so they changed, changed the, the back end okay but it starts at 102,000. so after our Last episode, episode nine, we talked about um, the best looking cars. And after that episode, I started thinking of the LFA and the LC500. Mm -hmm. Now, in my opinion, they're not the best looking cars. They are really good looking, but I don't think they make the cut for the best looking cars. But it got me curious. I was like, with car sales kind of being down, I doubt a lot of people are buying the LC500. Yeah. So I looked at prices, and I found some for in the fifties and sixty thousand mm-hmm. dollar range. And you're getting a baby Lexus LFA. Yeah, I found one that had I think it was like nine thousand miles on it. That was fifty seven thousand dollars. It wasn't in Utah, but yeah, you're getting a baby That's... LFA. And in my opinion, the LC five hundred looks just as good. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yep. But yeah. I thought that that was interesting because, again, they do start at a pretty high price, yeah. but just in a couple of years, and a lot of it might have to do with the whole coronavirus thing going on, is they have dropped about half of what they retailed, yeah. their their MSRP was. Yep. Interesting. Um, here's a name you haven't heard in a while. Okay. 800 horsepower Yanko Silverado is a supercharged Chevy hauler. Wow. I haven't heard of Yanko since. Yanko, yeah. Oh. It's been a long time. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say these 18, 19 year olds have no clue. They only know because of Too Fast, Too Fury. Yeah. <laughs> Yanko did uh, performance parts on muscle cars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 2021 Chrysler Voyager will be called the Grand Caravan in, Cal- er, in Canada. Wait, I think I actually read an article about Did that you? because oh. I saw that um, the Grand Caravan was getting a new car. And I was like, what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't see where it was going, but I saw that Chrysler was making something called the Grand Caravan. Uh, Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Zago or Yago. It's X-A-G-O. Interesting. Yeah. Has a custom look inspired by Saturn's clouds. 
I really don't care about the news. I haven't even seen anything about this. Saturn's clouds? But Saturn has clouds, I guess. It, astronomers. I'm, anyway. Yeah, cool. But how would you pronounce that? The Yago? The Yago? Zago? How is it spelled again? X-A-G-O. Beats me. Zago. Yeah. Zago. No, I think it would be Zago. Like xylophone, Zago. But okay. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm scrolling through the news. Nothing else good? Nothing else good. Well. It's been a slow week. It has been. So. Yeah. You got to be careful with the companies you're looking at, though. Yeah. With some of those. Yeah. It, it just made me think of what we were talking about before the show. How I... Uh, saw oh, i went yeah. to a, a car website and they had one article that was saying the least reliable sports cars mm-hmm. and the mx5 was on this list and then i saw another article on the same day that said the most reliable. practical daily drivers sports car or the most the sports cars that have the whatever most practicality yeah. for a daily driver and the mazda mx5 was on it so like, Very contradictory. The, sorry, the Mazda Miata isn't practical. No, it's not practical, but it is reliable. Yeah. So. Of course, the Challenger was on the list for the least reliable. The Challenger was number two. And number two. It wasn't the top? It wasn't. Okay, good. Because remember the Ferrari. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, first of all, who the heck <laughs> yeah. has, oh, the Miata, the Camaro, the Mustang, the Challenger, Ferrari, number one, you yeah. suck. Yeah. Yeah. That's jumping from a $30,000 car to a $200,000 car. Who puts these lists together? I, I don't know. The Challenger competed with Ferrari. Uh, yeah. Apparently, the MX-5 also competes with Ferrari. Right. Okay, so that means everyone go out, buy a Miata. It competes with Ferraris. That's right. So, just be mindful of uh, some of those yeah. auto uh, websites. I I never really heard of this one. I just saw those two headlines. and It... It makes me wonder if they're like, hey, Johnny, you're in charge of putting together the least reliable sports cars. Johnny's like, cars. Yeah. And he just picks the, he just, he just types in cars. sports cars and then he just picks yeah. a bunch of them. Yeah. I don't know. And then, hey, Chris, while he's doing that, you take those cars and put them in this list. Yeah. Well, put them backwards. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. That really had, that wasn't in our outline. That had nothing to do with what we were mm-hmm. planning on talking about today. But I just saw that and was like, really? Yeah. Like, like, come on. Organize yourself better. Yeah. They know what is on your headlines and what's in your list. I run across that a lot with when you look at reliability. Yeah. Most sites out there say the Challenger is crazy reliable. Uh-huh. But then you run across like two or three that are like, oh, it's the worst reliable car out there. You know, don't buy one. It's like, who do you believe? I don't know. You kind of just got to try it out. You just have to try it out. And if it breaks, then a like mine did. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, well, anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, I appreciate you guys watching and listening. Um, you can find us here on YouTube or uh, our Instagram, Facebook at Brothers Talk Cars and BrothersTalkCars.com where we have our podcast. Um and you can listen to us anywhere podcasts are found if you don't want to view us on YouTube. If you don't want to see right. our ugly faces. <laughs> Only mom wants to see them, right? right. Yeah, that's okay. Hi, mom. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it for us. Peace. Peace. See ya.